former director, legal and public affairs of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Samuel Kwamkur, has expressed concerns over the silence of the federal government towards the threat on President Muhammad Buhari by the Boko Haram commander, Abubakar Shekau. The threat was also issued to the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Isa Ibrahim Pantami. Kwamkur expressed his worry in an interview before the expiration of his tenure on Friday. He said, and I quote, it is truly sad, but not surprising that the Boko Haram commander Abakar Shekau will release a video threatening to attack the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, and Honorable Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Isa Ibrahim Pantami. And still joining us live now in the studio to take a look at the Boko Haram attack in Adamawa is a security expert, Dixon Osaji, and also Bashir Babayola, who is the chairman of Nigerian Legion, Adamawa State. He will be speaking with us via phone shortly. Uh, good morning, Osaji. It's good Thank to you. have you here. Thank you, Amaga. How are you doing today? I'm good today. Um, again, we are here talking about security challenges and the issues that face us as a nation. Now, over the weekend, we heard about the attacks, okay. and you listened to the news, and you the president saying that in the coming weeks um, he's assuring Nigerians that we're going to see a defeat of uh, this Boko Haram in entirety as he claims. Do you think this is an over ambitious statement to make? Well uh, he gave us uh, that statement sometimes in 2015 when he came into uh, power he said in the next three months he's going to decimate Boko Haram mm. and uh, we did actually saw uh, what uh, the government did. Uh, you know, before then, uh, Boko Haram were holding about 17 territories. Yeah. And um, I think as of now, I don't think they are holding up to one or two territories, except uh, those territories in the northeast, which uh, the military are unable to advance to pierce through the enemy. Uh, on the attack on the uh, Garkida community, it's a really worrisome situation. And right. uh, Nigerian lives matters. Until we begin to place values on human lives, I uh, will uh, continue to see the spirit of insecurity. Uh, Boko Haram have a systematic way of operation. Uh, they have their own uh, political strategies and they mm -hmm. have their own um, tactical operational strategies. Uh, now, in their own political strategy, uh, they, they, they are population-centric in their own uh, uh, political uh, strategy in the sense that they want to uh, instill fear on the populace, they want to uh, subvert the citizens, and they also want to like, uh, coerce the citizens to believe their campaign. So uh, what is happening now is a clear form of intimidation because one of the way, uh, process in which terrorists get at government is to intimidate. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep saying it every time that until government begins to see themselves as the primary victim of terrorist attacks, in counterinsurgency, uh, people who are attacked by uh, criminal elements of Boko Haram or insurgents are not the primary victims. They are just uh, the direct victims. Uh, but the real victim here is the government because those insurgents that carry out the Garkida attack, uh, they don't have any business with those communities. The community never offended them. They just try to pass a message to the government. Mm -hmm. So until the government begins to see themselves as a victim of terrorist attack, uh, they will not put in strategies in place to curtail these guys because uh, it takes a level of advance to get into a community. Uh, Garkida shares a boundary with Sambisa Forest and a system whereby uh, some criminal element will take an advancing process. You know, when we talk about advance, it's just for you to move from a period of, uh, from, uh, from one uh, area to another, mm -hmm. and it takes time. It's also going to consume energy. And uh, my worries is that um, since uh, the insertion of this uh, Boko Haram menace in the past 10 years, uh, our government have not seen that war as a necessary war. They're still addressing it as a discretional war. Until we see that war as a necessary war, we will mm. not put in uh, architectures and uh, security applications in place. All right. Um, thank you. Not to cut you short. I just no, want to, right. again, take you back to what you said um, in relation to the attack. And you okay. say it's a statement that they are making, uh, the terrorist group, of okay. course, to authority. Now, let's connect it to what just happened recently when Sheikau, Abakar Sheikau, threatened the president and also the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, uh, Pantami. Now, is this, are we under some sort of siege? Because if Abu Bakr Shekaru, whom of course we know, uh, you know, he's been rumored dead so many times, obviously if he's doing this, it means he's alive somewhere, somehow. Uh, if he would be able to threaten the president of the nation, are we under siege really? 
Uh, well, uh, I'm not surprised uh, receiving such, uh, uh, hearing such a threat statement from Abu Bakr Shekau. Uh, the president is a citizen of this country. You and I are citizens also. A lot of people have died in action, so mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't see a big deal uh, uh, for the uh, terrorist guy to threaten the president. Nigerian life uh, has been threatened. Nigerian life has been maimed, destroyed by this uh, criminal element. Now they're taking it to the, uh, to, to the elites. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, people used to say that uh, if... Uh, if if an incident affects uh, the non-elites, you know, government don't seems to take it serious until it affects the elites. That's when government takes it serious. Well, uh, you know, when terrorists threaten uh, any actions, you don't take that uh, threat, uh, you know, uh, lightly. Likely. Yeah, yeah, because uh, they don't they don't give empty threats. When they threaten, they carry out their threats because they want to maintain their political strategies. You understand? So uh, the president himself has received this threat. Uh, what I expected the president to do now mm -hmm. is to ensure a full-blown military action on these guys and. Uh, the uh, other agencies that are not doing so well in this fight is the police. The military have done so well for this country. The army, the navy have done so well. The Air Force have done so well. It's just that uh, the uh, war against the terrorists was not well planned. Because when it started earlier on, they were so quick to project the military. Mm. The military is a last hope of defense. You know, when you're playing card or maybe you are having a game, you don't bring in your best card, you know. You need to reserve it. But in this fight against Boko Haram, the military thought, the government thought they were going to eliminate these guys mm -hmm. and uh, they projected the military. Because in country insurgency, you need to take you need to take over the territory, hold the territory, mm -hmm. and rebuild. Like in Karikida now. I uh, ask you to hold your thoughts okay. for a second uh, as you're talking about Karikida. I understand that um, our next guest is live now. Who is he? Is there at uh, Adamawa? Good morning. Can you hear me, Bashir? I'm hearing you. All right. Thank you for joining us. Please bring us up to speed with the situation in um, Adamawa as it is now. Well, in fact, uh, the situation in Adamawa concerning the insecurity, uh, in fact, is not something to write home about it. Uh, in fact, this issue of insurgencies, people wonder how this thing has been, you know, uh, carried out successfully by the insurgency. Uh, sometimes you will see that when our security men are around, you know, nothing will happen. Immediately, uh, they either move somewhere or maybe uh, they are trying to check another place. These people will strike immediately. And they will successfully, you know, cut out their operation before, uh, you know, information get to our security men. And by then, they have already caused havoc in that place. I don't know what actually is happening. Is it the information intelligence gathering that people are people like? Because it will happen within a short period, and they will succeed in their operation before our people come to understand that yes, something is happening in such a place. This is the problem that people wonder what actually is happening with this uh, security in our place. All this is happening is that there are security men will be around that area. Immediately within 10 or 15 minutes that they left that place, this thing will come up. You know, people wonder whether our people are not getting the, you know, uh, the intelligent uh, information gathering in time, or I don't know what is uh, happening really with this uh, information gathering. So people wonder whether it's political or something. In, uh, nobody can even tell what really is happening in, in our state. You know, it happens around uh, January, then recently last week again it happens. So really people wonder how this is happening currently without even the knowledge of our security men in, in the place. The community in that place seem to be these people, I don't know whether they are aware of all what is happening. And they don't want to cooperate with the security. I cannot even tell what is happening. This is something that actually people wonder how this is happening that uh, over time you've seen this kind of almost let's say coordinated and calculated attacks but there are no um, enough response is that what it means yes that's what i'm trying to say you see they will coordinate and then make sure that they succeed before our people uh, security may come to got to understand that actually there's insecurity in social place and by then they've already caused that havoc and run away all right. Uh, um, having said that, uh, what have you been able to do as a community if you're not getting the intervention that we should get from appropriate quarters, so to speak? 
You see, really the problem we're having here is that uh, communication uh, problem. You know, you don't know whom to communicate to. Because actually some areas, uh, you hardly get in contact with the security team that this is why it's happening in some place. So I think this is one of the problem. Most people we sometimes that maybe uh, as I'm talking to you, I'm a, 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 you know, a, a retired um, a military personnel. We have same, I'm the chairman of the Nigerian Legion Adamo State Chapter anyway, and we have all our men in the all areas, this area council. But hardly you can get com to communicate with authority that you will be telling them this is why it's happening. And we are not carried along. So actually this is where the problem lies. Hmm. All right. We have also seen uh, the president uh, has come out to say, um, you know, condole with the people, your own people uh, particularly, over the attack. But the question is, is this enough? Uh, what are those uh, practical issues that you would think will be the uh, solutions to this issue on ground? You see, really, uh, yes, it's normal. The president actually condole with the people and it's, it's normal. That's how it's supposed to be. Uh, what is happening is that actually we have to, you know, uh, look at it and then really go back to God. Let's pray to God because really what is happening now is something that you cannot predict that this is what is happening. I could remember, you know, 70 years ago when one of our senior officers went on the diplomatic course in, 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 uh, in UK. When he came back, he was interviewed at the airport. What came to his mind was that Nigeria is sick. I think that what could have been now, not that time. Because really seem to be uh, this country is sick. So uh, something has to be, you know, to be done because really the country is not all that well now. Uh, so I don't know how I can even put it because really everywhere, everybody knows, you know, uh, on his marks, waiting to move. So really I cannot even tell what is happening. All right, hold your thoughts there. I'm still with an expert uh, in the studio. Saji, you can hear the frustration uh, from him there as a resident. What are we not doing? When he talks about communication and synergy, what are we not getting right even? Yeah, what we're not getting right is uh, proactive measures. You know, uh, Security is in two forms, and uh, the form of security we practice in Nigeria is that we go after the loss. Security is defeated when you go after the loss. Going after the losses after the occurrence of an incident. Going after the losses after the killings of Nigerians, burning of properties, houses. So uh, what we need to do, we have to be proactive or proactive in this uh, area. How are we going to be proactive? We need to set, set up an institutions Because it baffles me that uh, with this high speed of insecurity now, we don't have crisis management centers. Because mm -hmm. I expected our government to have activated crisis management centers within those given states in the Northeast. Now, activating crisis management center, you bring in all the security uh, agency in place, you know, synergize them together as a unified uh, command control centers, so that that base will be where citizens can call on and say, hey, there's an attack going on, or there's a crime in progress, or there's an attack in progress. Because it baffles me when a criminal will come strike you know, succeed and go back. He made a very valid point that uh, he's amazed that sometimes when these guys come, before they come, the security agency will uh, leave the uh, vicinity and be, after, after the occurrence of the incident, they will not come back. Now, why is this happening? I want, I want to believe that, yes, maybe perhaps the security guys must have gotten a tip of that these guys are coming and they also assess their own uh, strength, looking at their strength and they understand that these guys that are coming are coming in numbers, large numbers, and they will not want to die in action. So that is where fear comes to play because the insurgents have succeeded in instilling fears on our security agencies. Mm -hmm. You know, the battle term in any given war is fear when you uh, when 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 you, when when you are scared of your enemy your enemy will succeed any day any time and anywhere so the boko haram they've been uh, provocative they've been intimidating protracting and also they've exhausted our security agencies so what the government needs to do now is to revamp the security architecture because it's not working it's not working. Nigerians are dying every day. The last time I was here, I told you the number we are in, uh, in the Global Terrorism Index. Yes, are you with me? Now, if we need to get things right and begin to write our names in the platter of uh, uh, success uh, among giving nations, we need to also uh, look into conflict entrepreneurs. Who are these guys sponsoring this uh, conflict? We have people using our own money to sponsor this conflict and key Nigerians in our own territory. We need to look at that as well because in the past few three, four, five years or so, I've not seen any uh, effective results 
you know, arresting those conflict entrepreneurs who are in charge of these people. Then uh, also deception also is going to be a very good one. The military should learn to be deceptive, you know, like uh, what uh, the president says in the, the few nearest time that they are going to dissipate uh, the Boko Haram. You know, sometimes when you want to carry out military actions, you need to talk less and do more. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And last week or two weeks ago, I saw them displaying some five Tucanos that uh, they just bought and everything. Those are a, 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 a threat to our national security. Are you with me because yeah. they need Sorry. to... Sorry, <laughs> in the interest of time. I know that uh, uh, he's still on phone. So I want to say thank oh, you very okay. much, uh, Bashir. Thank you. And please do uh, be safe. Thanks for your time this morning. And have a great day ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, also, stay with me in the studio. Yes, be before I cut you off, I just wanted to let him go. So you can just wrap up your thoughts. OK, there. yeah. So now, what, what uh, we need to uh, do as a nation now, uh, uh, the international community, they are not seeing us in a good light. And we, uh, Nigerian, uh, is really, Nigeria is derailing every day by day. We are going into the space of a fragile state now. Because it is now, Nigeria is now in a fragile state. And uh, I checked the fragile state index, and uh, I'm not happy with the result there. So uh, the government needs to uh, put human life first and uh, take away any other uh, uh, national interest. Human interest should come first. Then uh, the Northeast should be uh, well coordinated. And uh, before you know it, the security uh, problem there will be, will be history. All right. Thank you, Osaji. Thank you.